What is this strange mechanical device found at a house in the south of France? The building was built by the Knights Templar, but clearly, this device was installed much later. I would hazard a guess at the 19th or early 20th century. The current owners know nothing about its use and have not moved it. So I assume it is related to the pulley above and possibly the fireplace. Any ideas? It's called a clock jack. This expensive kitchen tool is from the 1700s and would have been imported from England. The clock jack works like a rotisserie in today's supermarkets or the spit on a fancy barbecue in your backyard. A large stone is attached to the ceiling. If the rope is loosened, the stone begins to descend which pulls a leather strap that is wrapped around a round metal wheel that is attached to a metal bar where a piece of meat has been skewered. The meat continually turns in front of the fire and cooks. It takes about 20 minutes for the stone to reach the ground, at which point a handle on the jack must be hand-turned to bring the stone up to start the process again. What is this serrated triangle I found at a thrift store? It measures 2.5 inches tall by 3 inches wide and is made of solid brass. Any ideas? It was patented in the late 19th century as a sanitary corner dust shield by the Rockwell Company in Endicott, New York. Designed to prevent dust and dirt from collecting in the corners of staircases, a wooden-handled tool is used to hammer the shield into position. This Victorian-style piece of hardware makes steps easier to sweep. My great-grandmother left this beautiful lantern to my father years ago, and we have decided to try and learn as much about it as we can. It's made of copper and brass and has a blue lens. Any help you can provide would be greatly appreciated. It's a William Harvey's ship starboard lantern. The design was patented on September 13, 1870, in Broomalaw, Glasgow. The red ones are port lights for the left side of the ship, and the blue or green ones are starboard lights for the right side of the ship. These port and starboard lights are also called running lights. The size of the lens was the indicator of the size of the ship it was used on. They ran from class 1 to class 4 and class 4 was used on vessels over 65 feet. If you need the name of the ship it was on, from my past experience in researching the provenance of a binnacle, Glasgow University may have an archive of the company records of William Harvey. I got this baton with a bunch of blacksmithing tools. I bought it on an online auction, so I sadly have no clue about the old owner. I'm guessing it might be African based on the decorations, and I have never seen a thread like this. It seems like it might be silver. It's 40 centimeters long. The decorations are made out of pearl ivory and wood. The larger part is hollow. So I think there might have been a blade or something that was connected to the smaller part. I did have a thought that it might have been a cut down sword stick with the blade missing. Any idea what is this thing? It's an Arabian camel whip from circa 1930s, but the actual whip part is broken off. It's made of braided leather, mother of pearl, and wood inlay. It measures about 36 inches in length from the handle to the leather popper end. The threaded metal inside of the handle is for the pick that should screw into. What is this part of a museum collection and need to ID? I'm a museum studies student who has been given the task of identifying this thing. It was donated to our collection by an elderly woman who traveled the world, and unfortunately, info on it is lacking. It is described as being from late 19th century France, and is labeled in our collection as Coupe Amigdales, a medical instrument. It has a polished horn head, wooden body, and metal casing holding those together. I am skeptical that it is a tonsil remover, as it's clearly not a tonsil guillotine, nor does it resemble anything like a tonsil removing tool. It's also made out of odd materials for a medical tool in general. Around 9.5 inches long, the head is 1.5 inches with no branding. Help please. It's a 19th century agate burnisher, a specialized tool used in applying gold leaf to objects like picture frames and even in bookbinding. This is an older tool that probably dates from the 1800s. Polished agate is a traditional material used in making burnishers and varies in color and pattern. Fine artisans would hand down their burnishers to a family member or favorite apprentice. What is this ceramic dice found in a garden in Bernard Castle north of England? I'm wondering whether it was used for a game, for gambling, or fortune telling. Any idea what this could be? 
It's an English teetedum gambling ball from the 17th to 18th century. Each of the 32 sides incised with the numbers 2 to 32 and a crown. They were used for gambling and lotteries, the latter first becoming an acceptable means of raising money around 1568, during the reign of Elizabeth I, when there was an urgent need for funds for repairs to the harbors and fortifications of the country, then under threat of invasion from the Spanish. And the most well-known was the Royal Oak Lottery, which was popular in the 17th century, and then outlawed as the game caused widespread losses among all classes. English philosopher John Locke mentions the 32-sided ball in his 1693 book on education, introduced by Charles I to fund the carrying of water to London. We have this thing at my work, a 19th century B&B. &B. I know it's some kind of lamp, but I truthfully have no idea. Any info on maker age would be appreciated. It's known as a pigeon lamp, named after its inventor Charles Pigeon. But the lampshade is not original as far as I can tell. Pigeon patented the first portable non-exploding gas-powered lamp in 1884, and won special recognition at the 1900 Paris Exposition for a design that vastly improved Victorian lighting, with the promise of 12 hours of good light for one halfpenny. This lamp was manufactured in France for the English market and has the 10,000 francs guarantee that it would not explode on the handle, indicating it was likely made before 1910. I work at a historical research library. This object is part of the collection, but no one on the staff can identify what it is or what it's for. The lenses on the object are dark red and dark blue and possibly from the 19th century. Our guesses include that it's ophthalmology equipment or land surveying equipment. What is this thing? It's a Trotton's reflecting circle. This navigational instrument was invented by the German geometer and astronomer Tobias Mayer in 1752. His development preceded the sextant and was motivated by the need to create a superior surveying instrument. Edward Trotton, the famous London instrument maker, modified the reflecting circle in 1796. He created a design with three index arms and verniers. As a navigation instrument, the reflecting circle was more popular with the French Navy than with the British. What is this bowl made of copper or brass? The inside is blank, it has a wooden stand, and at least 70 years old. It was used for a baptism around 1950 in Germany, but we doubt it was originally made for the baptism looking at the ornaments. It had been sitting around in the house ever since. What could this be? That is a Swande sensor. These are quite valuable things to collectors, and Swande bronzes are overall exquisitely intricate with very harmonious shapes. It certainly looks like the Swande mark written on your bowl, but it is absolutely clear that this item is not a Ming bronze cast during the reign of Swande. It is modern and rather crude, not even trying to fake it. I'd consider it made at the end of the 19th century, maybe the beginning of the 20th century when it was all the rage to slap the Swande mark on stuff to sell it to unsuspecting amateurs of oriental antiques. Still, Swande copies have become something of a collectible too, as these wares are now part of the history of Chinese crafts. I am the curator of the Asian collections of a museum, so that's kind of my field. I found this in an early 19th century village recreation in the Czech Republic. A large container around 1.5 meters long with handles on either end for people to hold. The container has no holes and is full of large rocks the size of rock melons and sits on two rollers. The two rollers sit on a long sturdy table. What is this thing? Please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.